What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Observant Lineman. Now, I've talked a lot of times on my channel about the lack of concern or consideration that a lot of NFL franchises actually have for their players. You know, for a league that pulls in over $20 billion a year, you would think that there would be more concern for the assets that allow them to make the kind of money that they make and get the revenues, the revenue that they get uh, because of the performance of athletes with amazing abilities each and every Sunday, each and every Monday, and each and every Thursday during the football season. You would think that there would be some kind of humane, uh, just consideration for the well-being of your athletes, the well-being of these guys who put their bodies on the line, who damage their brains every time they step out on the field, you would think that these people who are humans would care about other humans who are in the way of danger on a regular basis in this violent sport that we call football. You would think. Um, and of course, Time and time again, we realize that they don't really give a damn. We realize that they don't really care about the well-being of every human who is out there on the field as a football player. And that brings me to the topic of today's video, Trent Williams. Trent Williams, as everyone knows, held out from returning to the facilities in Washington because of uh, unknown reasons to start. Now, a lot of people can, uh, attributed that to maybe being or having something to do with the state of the franchise, the state of the uh, of, of how the team was being built, how things were looking for the future. But no, Trent Williams left the team and held out and decided not to show up or report to anything having to do with the Washington Reds Redskins until this week because of the lack of of reaction to the cancer scare he had based on the fact that he had uh, doctors that are affiliated or work for the Washington Redskins give him a misdiagnosis and misinformation in regards to a growth that was uh, getting bigger on his actual skull. And <clears throat> when he found out that things were really, uh, uh, at, at a point that were serious enough to threaten his own health, he realized that he had been lied to. Thus, Trent Williams has removed himself from being involved in any kind of on-field activities with the Washington Redskins. Let's go into the article. Pro Bowl tackle Trent Williams says he no longer trusts the organization and felt they were vindictive in how they waited until the last minute to try to trade him. He also remains upset over how long uh, he said it took for them to take care of a cancerous growth on his scalp. Williams, who ended his holdout Tuesday, spoke publicly for the first time since the end of last season and held little back. There's no trust there, Williams said. There are some things that happened that are hard to look past. Williams said he held out because he was upset with the medical staff, though he didn't name anyone in particular and because the Redskins wouldn't give him more guaranteed money in the last two years of his contract. It expires after the 2020 season. <clears throat> he also wouldn't say whether he'd play for the Redskins this season. He returned because it hadn't, uh, because if he hadn't done so by 4 p.m. to uh, Tuesday, he would need uh, the team to apply uh, to the commissioner's office or, or the commissioner's office for his reinstatement. That could have prevented him from getting credit for a year played. It wasn't until he had a cancer scare that he wanted to end his relationship with the organization. Williams said he was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer called dermatofibro... Whoa. DFSP. Let's just call it that. <laughs> Williams said doctors told him the growth was removed only weeks before it would have reached uh, his skull. And he said doctors told him to get his affairs in order. Williams said uh, when he said goodbye to his daughters, ages nine and five, before surgery, 
He didn't know if, if they'd see him again. Now think about that for a second. You go into the doctor's office one day and you want to have them look at a growth that you were told was nothing serious. And in this situation, Trent Williams found out that he had a cancerous tumor that was a mere weeks from actually penetrating into his skull. And he had to have surgery to have that growth removed. Um, I mean, how unbelievably scary is that for a father of two daughters? I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable. It was cancer. I had a tumor removed from my skull, attached to my skull. It got pretty serious for a second, Williams said. I was told some scary things from the doctors. It was definitely nothing to play with. It was one of those things that will change your outlook on life. And of course, I mean, can you blame this guy for feeling betrayed by an organization that is supposed to be uh, looking out for the well-being to make sure that they're uh, of a player, to make sure that they're in the best shape, to make sure they're in the best physical health. And, you know, they let him down. They let him down. And now he's in a situation where he has to go under the knife with the possibility of losing his life in order to get this thing taken care of. I mean, it's, it's, it makes me pissed. I'm pissed off about it myself because, you know, we've been there. How many of us professional athletes, how many of us athletes in general have been there? I've been there, you know, having a doctor sitting there tell me that something's not really wrong with my knee, but then, you know, I can't seem to put any pressure on it. So, you know, there's gotta be something wrong with it. You know, I mean, unbelievable. William said he first asked the Redskins, uh, medical staff about the growth on his head six years ago. But he said nothing was done until until this, this offseason. The Redskins, over the past several months, have offered a different version, and sources said they prodded him to seek more medical attention. In a statement released Thursday evening, the Redskins said they've requested the NFL's management council and the NFLPA review the medical records and the medical care given to Williams. We've requested this review under the NFL's collective bargaining agreement, that provides for an independent third-party review of any NFL player's medical medical care. The statement read, The Redskins continue to uh, prioritize the health and well-being of our players and staff. Really? Due to health care and privacy regulations, we're unable to comment further at this time. Williams asserts that he was told the lump was something minor. I mean, the lump continued to grow over the years. It was concerning, but there was no pain involved. And if I'm being told by the very people I put my career in their hand, in the hands of, people are telling me I'm fine, I'm fine, he said. That's how I looked at it. After his 18-minute interview session with reporters at his locker, Williams said he even told doctors to remove the growth during previous surgeries on his thumb and on his knee and his thumb. But it wasn't until this offseason when Redskins doctors examined him and told him to go to, to go to a specialist. I mean, look, this is nothing new. This is nothing new for all of us who, who have been involved in sports on any level uh, higher than, than high school. When there's real liability uh, and there are real consequences that can be had uh, and, and can be a detriment to the institutions and the programs, uh, whether it be college or professional, we all have been in situations where you can tell that they're under, uh, they're underplaying or they're, they're, they're understating the seriousness of, of, a, of a particular issue, whether it's a, a joint, whether it's a, a, a bone, whether it's ligaments, whether it's muscles, or whether it's a tumor. And even in my time in, in Jacksonville, uh, when I saw the actual team doctors, the team doctors downplayed my injuries all the time. And I was just like, what the, like you, this, the way this thing feels is not representative of what you're telling me it is. But, you know, aside from that, this guy had a really serious problem, had a really serious life threatening issue. And when you're talking about something that's dealing with your skull, it's the same thing as talking about something like CTE. Like that is deadly serious when you're talking about somebody's head. Um, but you know, just to continue on, uh, 
Williams said they kind of underestimated it and it was far more advanced than they realized. And I don't think they realized how long it was there. From there, he flew on, uh, they, from there, he flew on owner Dan Snyder's plane to Chicago for further examination. That's where he had uh, the surgery in the winter. William said he needed 350 stitches and 75 plates on his head, or I'm sorry, 75 staples on his head. The diameter of the incision was about that of a softball. We literally caught it within weeks of uh, metastasizing through to my brain, to my skull. Williams said, extracting it would have only would have, was the only thing they could do. Uh, doing radiology on it would have put a cap on my life. I think 15 years was the most I would have had after uh, I started chemo. So I had to, so I had to cut it out. All of the emotion from this offseason rushed back to Williams when he taught when he walked into the building Tuesday, and had to get a physical from a staff he no longer trusted. During his media session, Williams constantly shook his right leg as he sat on a stool in front of his locker. Uh, it was a lot of emotions. I'm not going to lie and say it wasn't, he said. I almost lost my life. Seriously, I almost lost my life. You're 30 and coming off seven straight Pro Bowls, and a doctor tells you to get your affairs in order. It's not going, it's not going to sit well with you. It still doesn't. It's still, even thinking about it, it's a scary thing to go through. Think how you describe to your nine-year-old, your five-year-old, that daddy might not be here. It's tough. He had two subsequent cosmetic procedures done in the spring. William's scalp remained sensitive from the surgery. Uh, he said it caused him discomfort when he put on a helmet. Because of that, he failed the physical. Redskins interim coach Bill Callahan said they're trying to have a helmet customized for Williams. However, Williams did not say he would play again for, the, for Washington. Hey, I don't blame you, brother. I don't blame you. Uh, there ain't no helmet y'all could make for me that would allow me to come back on the field for y'all after after that kind of situation happened. It would be, no, it's just not happening, period. Williams said he told the team before the June minicamp that he no longer wanted to play for them, but Redskins, but the Redskins told teams the price tag to obtain Williams was high and they did not try to aggressively shop him until before Tuesday's 4 p.m. deadline. I mean, when you give them the 48 hours to strike a deal, it probably isn't going to happen, he said. I just felt like that was done to embarrass me, to try to make it try to make it feel like ain't nobody wants you. You're not good enough for us to trade for. I felt like that was the play more so than to get me moved. So again, this is, this is these are just politics and 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 dirty tricks being played by an organization that clearly has lost its way, you know, outside of maybe the Jets. Eh, and maybe the Browns, you know, the worst run organization in football, you know, the Washington Redskins. Unbelievable. Williams said uh, no team official visited him, visited him at the hospital during his two weeks in Chicago, but former teammate D'Angelo Hall did. But Williams said he wanted guaranteed money in his final two years of his contract. The final two years of his contract did not include guaranteed money, including next year's base salary of $12.5 the Redskins have long said privately the situation was about money and they did not want to give him an extension fearing a bad precedent. No, they weren't fearing a bad precedent. They were fearing that this guy was wanting to secure his future because of how they did him uh, by almost letting him, almost letting brain cancer literally uh, metastasize or metastasize into his skull. That's That's what they were holding the money from because they didn't think he was going to be there. But Williams said he just wanted to be, be taken care of, especially after seeing quarterback Alex Smith suffer a possible career-ending injury uh, last season. I represented this franchise in the Pro Bowl the last seven years. To me, I would think that that would be good for something. Yeah, they have no loyalty to you, so have no loyalty to them. That's basically how it's, how it's got to be played. <clears throat> when last season ended, Williams said he did not envision this day. No, no, never. We had conversation or so about the guaranteed money or lack thereof, but it was never me thinking I'd be in, an or be in any other organization, not in December, not at all. Williams said he does not harbor any ill will towards Snyder, adding he has a ton of respect for Dan. I love him to death. 
I don't look at it uh, being his fault. That's why he didn't want to speak publicly during his holdout, fearing his words would make Snyder look bad and be taken out of context. But when asked if his relationship with the team president, Bruce Allen, could be prepared, uh, Williams simply said, next question. See how that works, Baker Mayfield? See how that works? Next question. That's all you got to say. That's all you got to say. <clears throat> Williams said he did not think the Redskins were vindictive in the beginning. I think it turned that way. He said, I became, it became a power struggle. Uh, it became, no, we're not going to fold for you as a player because that would make it seem to every other player that that's how they get business done. I get that part, but I do think it did turn that way over time. Uh, nor did Williams think about retiring in the off season. I still love it. It's still the game. I'm here, but I just feel things could have gotten handled a lot better. Obviously, uh, it got us to this point. So Trent Williams being very candid about his situation with the Redskins. And again, um, you know, this is the part of the game that makes me feel like uh, players are right to, you know, do everything they can to be empowered and to uh, force the hands of franchises. Because when you don't, when you don't, when you sit back and you allow them to set the narrative, uh, these are the kind of things that happen. You know, these are the kind of situations that players end up in. So guys like Jalen Ramsey, and I hate to say it, and I'm only saying it for about like two, two to five percent of what he did, but Antonio Brown as well. Like you see how these teams do business. You see how these franchises don't give a damn. So why should you? And at the end of the day, if that leads to a league where players are more able to control their own destinies, then that's that's a good that's a good outcome in my book. So hit the like button if you liked this video. Subscribe to The Observant Lineman. Hit the bell notification so that you can get a notification each and every time I drop a new video. I'm Uche Waneri. I appreciate each and every one of you for checking out my video on Trent Williams and his battle with the Washington Redskins. Appreciate you all, and I will catch you all on the next video. Peace. Perfect.